I am Kui Hui, strategy professor at INSEAD. Today I have the pleasure to interview Dr. Max Stein from Imperial College of London. Dr. Max Stein is an expert on the management of organizational crisis and leadership. I am very intrigued um, by, by, by your article writing on the Oedipus Complex and Enron. So could you explain to us what the Oedipus Complex is and how does it affect Enron? Well, the Oedipus Complex is based on the story of a young man. It's a Greek myth called Oedipus who meets somebody on the road one day who won't move his chariot. Oedipus gets very angry and he kills this person. Uh, and what Oedipus doesn't know, what he finds out later on, because he wasn't brought up by his parents, was that the person he kills is his father. And this myth is a metaphor. It's a way of trying to understand the struggle that any young child will go through in relation to the parental authority. And it's about trying to deal with the parental authority, which is part of what we believe all young children go through and what indeed we bring into organizations in dealing with authority. And it's that kind of theme that I've brought to bear in looking at the case on Enron. So could you please uh, uh, explain to us uh, how, how the Oedipus complex unfold in the demise of Enron? Okay, so a lot has been written on Enron. It's a very complex and very multifaceted case. But it's a very important case because it was in fact the largest uh, corporate collapse in history at the time. And one of the striking things about Enron was that it and its predecessor organizations were in the gas industry and that's very important. Because the gas industry went through a terrible time during the 70s and 80s in, in the United States. Mm -hmm. The regulation of the industry was chaotic, messy and very problematic. And my argument is that the regulatory organizations are in a parental role in relation to the company. So th this company was then predisposed to think about its regulators, its parental companies, parental organizations as problematic and had a view that the parental organizations would cause more damage than do good. Yeah, so it's not a good parent. Exactly. So predisposed to that way of thinking, they then recruit leaders, in this case particularly Jeffrey Skilling and Ken Lay, who themselves have had problematic histories in their own background in relation to parental authority, and bring in that sense of a problematic history into the organization. So kind of buttressing this view that the authority that that regulates the company must be problematic and buttressing a view that that authority must be undermined and reduced and subverted. And that's exactly what Enron did. It undermined its regulatory authority so that the safeguards, the safety apparatus was removed, enabling the company to do some completely wild and unacceptable things, uh, ultimately leading to collapse. Yeah, much has been talked about that companies have to be innovative, have to take risk, and, but, but in this case that this is the backside of being too innovative or too risk-taking in a way that would infringe the law. Is that, that, is that your point? I think that is right. I mean, I think innovation is terribly important in today's global era, but, and it is interesting that Enron was um, judged to be the most, the most innovative, innovative company in, in, in the States six years in a row. Um, but that's interesting because, in fact, what we have here is a confusion between innovation and the thwarting and subverting of authority. And I think what is important is a company that can strike a balance between doing something new and different, but also playing according to the rules that are set for it. Because those rules, particularly in the case of Enron, were there to safeguard the company, the shareholders, the employees. And when those rules were subverted, so everything went wrong. In your experiences, is Enron an exceptional case that experienced the Oedipus complex, or you have seen perhaps the same phenomena in other companies, but maybe at a lesser degree of severity? Enron is quite an extreme case, but I think what is important is that this phenomenon is around, and it's something that many organizations struggle with, many managers, many leaders struggle with. And I guess my argument is that this is something we need to be aware of and work with and try and do something to deal with 
because if it's left unattended, then you get into the kind of Enron scenario where it gets very problematic. What kind of industries, for example, would be more likely to, you know, to, to, to question the legitimacy of authority, of the legal authorities? Well, I think it's particularly organizations that are on the edge of doing something new. I mean, the more innovative you are, the more likely you are to be questioning received ways of doing things. And as I mentioned, this, you know, innovation is absolutely fundamental. And that's precisely why it's so complex, is actually finding a way to find the right balance between being innovative, but also not doing things that are illegal or in illicit or in some way undermining the authority of the company or its regulators. So it could happen in almost any industry that's kind of on the cutting edge of new things. I think that's particularly where you have to look out for this problem. Yeah. Recently, we heard a lot about uh, uh, crisis and scandals in the financial industry, for example. Uh, would those that financial industries fit in that model that you talk about, or it's a different model? No, I think it's absolutely the case that this kind of problem is in that industry, is in financial services. Absolutely. I wouldn't want to mention any company specifically because I'd need to look at the data very carefully, but certainly, you know, these, these issues are around there too. And in fact, Enron, despite being a initially a gas utility, turned out to be very much a trading organization and became a financial services organization as much as it was a utility. So, yes, you know, it's certainly around there too. So thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure. <laughs>